so this is the conceptual question that you do this Friday. Um, I'm continuing to do with what I've been doing uh, with the generative AI. And I think I've done this uh, last time and there's a playlist that I've been looking to that you can go take a look at, but I'm doing this with the improved version of the generative AI. Um, and uh, it, uh, I will say so far, I am actually impressed with how well perplexed it has done. Um, it, the access to internet really does make a lot of difference, both in terms of the answers are simply not being wrong, the way some of the chat GPT answers can be wrong, and um, and the, the, it, it gives you reference. So in the odd cases where it's wrong, you can kind of tell for yourself by following those references. So uh, you might be under, wondering how will this text-based chatbot will um, answer image-based question. Uh, one is each of these images, they have an accessibility feature built in. Uh, you can see here, there's an alt text that actually describes the image. Uh, I copied most of them from the, uh, OpenStax because all the figures come from OpenStax. And uh, the way the copy and paste works, most of the time, if you kind of select this image, copy and paste, then um, it should work, the, yeah, the normal way. You see how it copy the text, draw the FBD of the forces, draw it in, a, and then it gives the description of the figure. Let me give uh, the AI a little bit of a help. Um, 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 where it says draw, give a description of the drawing uh, that the student should uh, draw a uh, figure description is below. And let me just copy this into my clipboard so that I can just paste in each time. So I'm just going to do all these 11 figures and see how well chat, not chat GPT, uh, perplexity, which does use GPT, how well perplexity describes the figures that uh, someone should be drawing. So there's the question. What is the tension in the line? Oh, uh, use letter T. Yeah, I, there's no value for tension. All right, draw the dot to represent a bird, midway between the poles, okay, downward arrow to gravitational force, okay, draw two diagonal arrows pointing away from the dot one. Yeah, that, uh, I think it's correct. All of this, uh, this part isn't necessary, that's not what it's asking, so, um, <laughs> again, um, now, so if you submit this, that is definitely one, it's wrong because I didn't ask you to describe it. I asked you to draw it. And two, uh, it would be, um, I would consider that academic dishonesty if, uh, um, if you're simply copying and pasting, um, what the, uh, what, what the generative AI describes. But, um, if you are using this as a learning tool, this is something that you could do. So, you know, try to follow the steps. It says to draw a dot. Okay. So I have a dot. Then it says draw a downward arrow. Okay, downward arrow to represent gravitational force, labeled as weight is equal to mg. And then draw two diagonal arrows pointing away from the dot, one to the left, one to the right, uh, kind of looking at these strings, going this way, that way. Uh, label these forces as T using the same label. Um, and so this would be the diagram that would result with someone who's reasonably fluent in English <laughs> trying to follow these instructions. And this is where that fine line is. If you are simply following the, these directions blindly and not understanding what it is you have drawn, then that might still be academically dishonest to use of uh, generative AI. But if you take some time to understand what this figure means, um, yeah, it's necessary, maybe ask follow-up questions, and finally, properly cite your use of generative AI, then all of that is perfectly fine. Um, that's why that discussion uh, topic that we had at the beginning of the semester is available, so that people who want to use the generative AIs honestly as a learning tool can use it. And um, I don't have uh, any objection to people using it to learn. The objection and, and the, the academic dishonesty uh, 
um, thing that only comes up when people are using it to cut corners, when people are using it to avoid the learning instead of helping you learn. So, um, so yeah, this uh, instruction is great. It, uh, it, it, for, to someone who's able to follow them, it will lead you to correct the diagram. Uh, let's keep going. Um, so I'm going to first copy and paste this in. And then um, so I'm going to uh, paste in the same instruction before. Where is the straw? Yeah. Create a uh, figure shows an object on the slope of that arrow pointing a parallel. To it. Okay, yeah. So let me send that. Uh, weight of the crate. Um, uh, use letter W. It's, it's not given. Normal force. Um, use letter N. Oh, force. Mm. That's um, use letter W. Is it gonna get it wrong? First part, uh, use letter F. <laughs> That's a lot of follow up questions. Uh, let's see, to draw the free body diagram, draw the dot. Uh, so let me just follow that uh, instructions now. I'm just gonna turn my brain off and try to follow it just step by step without thinking too much. Okay, I have a dot. Downward arrow to represent the weight. Okay, W uh, perpendicular to the slope. Yeah, perpendicular to the slope. So someone should be able to at least understand what they mean by perpendicular to the slope. Um, Label this N arrow parallel to the slope, pointing up the slope to. Yeah, that is correct. Um, that's all the forces frictionless slope. Yeah. That's the correct diagram. And again, um, if you are simply, so, so again, if you are copying and pasting this, that is definitely wrong. You shouldn't be, you should not be doing that. One, it's wrong answer. You're not drawing. <laughs> and two, just copying and pasting, it's academically dishonest. If you have drawn this figure following these instructions, again, the right thing to do is uh, one, spend some time to understand what it is you have drawn to properly cite the interaction with the generative AI that you have used. If you've done those two things, then um, then it's all perfectly uh, allowed. Uh, and uh, um, it, it, where the, there's a bit of a fuzzy line that's difficult for me to enforce other than in that one-on-one -on -one check-in meeting is where people have, you know, drawn this figure and then didn't spend the time to understand. Uh, it'll eventually all show up in that one-on-one -on -one meeting because people who cut corners won't understand the physics in the way that you should understand. So it's not like you can get away with it forever, but sometimes people think they are getting away with it when all you are doing is delaying the inevitable. Um, learn the physics. That's really the only way to get through this class successfully. Let's okay, draw the free money diagram. I have this instruction, the figure. Uh, yeah, that looks right. Let me just submit it. Do you want the of the um, um, block is the hanging object? No. So draw the free body resting on the draw the so let me just follow those instructions again. Draw the dot to represent the block. Draw the downward arrow to represent the weight. Or perpendicular. You're right, right. Uh, actually, that's not quite perpendicular. This is maybe a little bit closer to perpendicular. Um, draw an arrow parallel to slope point. Uh, tension force. Okay, um, I guess labeling attention isn't, um, it's okay. Uh, it's, I might call it uh, like, I might label it with a different letter like uh, 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 like F uh, subscript spring for spring force, but tension is fine, it's not wrong. It just, um, yeah. Yeah, and so this is the correct diagram, no issues. Again, other than um, if we are using interaction like this, do it in an academically honest way. You know, do, so, you know, don't do what I do. Don't turn your brain off and just blindly follow the instructions <laughs> that you shouldn't do. Um, 
I think that is all uh, correct description. Mass of the block, um, uh, just to use the letter M. I don't have numbers. Okay, I'm gonna draw the figure again. And I, they do have generative AI for image generation, so I assume this uh, figure drawing part is not gonna be remain a limita limitation for a long time. But um, for the time being, the chatbots that are available, downward arrow to, to grab the right, um, can deal with the text or image, not uh, both. I'm perpendicular to the slow pointing. Of it. So here you would have to know as a human being looking at this drawing, the perpendicular away from the slope is actually going this way. Um, you shouldn't be drawing it the way I've been drawing for the other figures. Um, Draw an arrow parallel. Uh, so, okay, that is wrong. So if I just blindly drew this, I would be drawing this, and that is wrong. Um, I should be drawing this force. So yeah, and the um, the 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 last part it's not wrong, but the way it instructed me to draw the force F. That is wrong. Even though that's the direction that it's uh, uh, sliding in, the direction of the force you should be drawing is this. Um, that's the actual uh, force that's being applied. And in one of the later steps in the standard strategy, you might be breaking it into two components. You know, component that is parallel along the surface and the component that is perpendicular to the surface. And this component will be just uh, increasing normal force. And, and so, um, but the correct figure is not what it's instructed me to do. It's uh, this um, portion of the figure. So, okay, it got one wrong. <laughs> I think that's the first one that it's gotten wrong so far this semester. Um, so, <laughs> uh, let me keep going. Uh, I don't know what description of an Atwood's machine we would have. Um, so draw the blocks M1 and M2. Awesome, M2 is larger than M1. And I need that instruction about the describing rather than drawing. A pull is attached, a rope goes over it, block mass M1 is attached to the left hand and right end of the rope as M2 things. Lower case M2, lower than M1. All right, that looks like the right description. Let's see how it does. To draw the free body diagrams, draw a dot. Uh, oh, good, it's breaking out two blocks. That's good, that's what it should do. Um, so draw a dot to represent M1. Draw a downward arrow to represent the gravity. W1 is M1G. Draw an upward arrow to represent tension, T. And then the four block M2. Draw a dot to represent M2. Downward arrow to represent the gravity, W2, M2G. And upward arrow. Now, um, there is some need for justification for using the same level for T, uh, but Given how common it is for tension on this side and this side to be the same, I wouldn't uh, really um, um, uh, uh, argue with you too much that this should have been different letter. Um, so yeah, that's that's correct enough. It, um, it, with the caveat that to be perfectly correct, this should have started out with the different values and you need to um, justify. And I don't think you can actually, you have enough information to justify. You need to know basically that the pulley is frictionless and massless. If you know that for the pulley, then you can justify that T1 is equal to T2. Otherwise, you needed some difference in the tension for accelerating the pulley itself. So, um, but good enough, uh, not wrong, We're just missing some details that, that a lot of students will also miss. Okay, so question six. Uh, let me paste this in, and I might actually recopy this into the um, clipboard so I don't have to keep scrolling down so much. 
Okay, draw free by the moving circular path shown. Choose and give description above view, which allows you to draw clear step free by diagram. And turn on the table, mass is attached to me. Okay, that seems right. So it should start out with a choice of a wide view. The, um, give me your best choice. A uh, top view uh, would, well, uh, I think I, in the answer, I might do both the top and uh, side view. Um, if I didn't do both, I probably would have done side view. Um, search <laughs> most relevant one. Well, uh, circular motion, free body diagram drawing. Uniform circular, well, yeah. Uh, adding object in circular motion. Identifying, maybe not, because uh, you have to draw it. Centripetal force, maybe. Uh, I don't know if we can actually get uh, YouTube videos. Um, well, circular motion and full body diagram. Uh, maybe. Mm. Let me just choose everything to make it difficult. <laughs> um. Okay, choosing a top view. Um, I mean, it, it can be defensible, not the best view, but uh, let's go with that. Top view. Um, looking down, yeah. Um, draw a dot to represent the mass. Draw a, a arrow pointing toward the center of the circle, okay. And label this as T. And um, uh, yeah, so it's kind of um, glitching out from here. So it says there are only two forces. So far, I've drawn only one force. It does mention gravitational force. Um, table gra balanced by normal force. Yeah, those should be there. And it hasn't given you instructions on how to draw it. <laughs> uh, so, so to draw them and have a complete diagram, you do need to draw gravity as going... Uh, going into the page. So um, we indicate that with an arrow, uh, with a circle with an X on it. Uh, visually, you imagine like an arrow that's pointing away from you. So that X is the tail end of the arrow. Uh, so you need that for gravity. And if you are looking at it from top, then you have a point, a force vector that's pointed out towards you that uh, would be the normal force. So I, I think uh, based on the rest of the response, it knows that those should be there. The gravitational force and normal force, but it didn't um, gravitational force and normal force, but it didn't give you the actual instructions for drawing that. So this one uh, maybe half credit. I guess if this was a student answer, I probably would have marked it as incorrect because I did say uh, to uh, choose a view. Um, uh, side view allows you to draw all three vectors the best. Yeah, but the side of view has, the, I guess, the downside of making it harder to see in the snapshot that it's a circular motion. Um, all right, below figure shows the components of the forces, right? Because these are only components, not the full. Uh, draw the full free body diagram of the object. Let's just, well, I don't know if it's going to get that right. Let's just, that's a lot of um, As fields of force. W sub parallel in a direction parallel towards its bottom. F uh, in a, yeah. Uh, because before, in one of the earlier questions, it gave instruction for drawing a component of it. So I don't know how well um, it would get this. What view? Um, the view are already in use. I'm just trying not to give it too much help. Uh, for one here, the particular view doesn't matter. Uh, sleeping. Okay. Um, draw a dot to represent the object on the incline. Draw a downward arrow to represent the weight. Okay. Um, draw an arrow perpendicular to the slope and pointing away. Yeah, I mean, uh, part of that is the blocks on an inclined slope. They all look the same. They, they, the free body diagrams for those really shouldn't be all that different. Draw an arrow parallel to the slope. Yeah, I guess, um, oh wait, um, ah, yeah, friction force, yeah. And the friction force is really along the incline. It's not um, 
it's not like the other uh, F force up there. So, yeah, and I think in the rest of the response, it might be describing how the um, how, how the the magnitudes should compare. Let me vertically downward. Um, since the resting on the incline without slipping, the balances component of weight, yeah. So it should be, so I mean, it's hard to, to show it visually all the time, but if everything's drawn to scale, then this component should be the same length as that. Um, yeah, that, that's good. That's, so it correctly got that it's really only the weight that needs to be shown its full uh, vector quantity, not just the component. Um, all right, let's keep going. I have a uh, question eight. Uh, uh, another circular motion. Um, child feels pressed into the seat. Yeah, as the roller cross passes point A. Let me this this question illustration. A is at the top. B is down and to the left of the. Yeah. All right. Oh, in which view of the, the view currently in use? Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm trying not to help it too much. Point A, top of the law, draw the dot, okay. Downward arrow from the top to represent gravity okay so far so good draw an arrow pointing towards the center of the loop to represent the normal force yeah and um i guess whoever's drawing the arrow should know towards the center of the loop is actually downward um <laughs> and it, you know it's not wrong for uh perplexity to say uh, towards the center of the loop that is correct and here the towards the center at point a happens to be downward um yeah, two forces of the vertical downward and towards the center of the loop, which happens to be downward. And is greater than zero, right? Um, the net force acting centripetal pointing towards, yeah, that, that's all correct. <laughs> okay, uh, three more questions. Uh, I think, it, okay, so all together, this will take maybe 35 minutes, I think. Uh, 20 minutes was an uh, overly optimistic estimate. Mm -hmm. 11 questions is a lot. So just uh, so you uh, uh, re remember, realize, note, uh, you only have to do three. Uh, it, you, in the old assignment system, it used to be you should answer all 11, but um, since I've simplified the grading rubric so that I'm always grading only three questions, you can only do three. You can do more, but you don't have to. And if you do do more than three, then people who are grading your work should try to look at their best three. Okay, block sliding slide down. There's some friction between the, um, um, all right, let's see, illustration, push it into a slope, okay, good. Um, by a horizontal force, the slope angles up and to the right, horizontal to the right. Does it say friction? No, there is some friction. So it should actually indicate the direction of friction force. Let's see how well it does. Is that slightly like that? You know, it's static. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll say kinetic. Uh, uh, kinetic. Um, so it's asking, you know, is it, I think it's trying to ask, is it acceleration zero or not? But even if acceleration were zero, as long as there was a sliding happening, it would still be kinetic friction, not static friction. Oh, which search result? Uh, oh, let me just choose everything. So I'm just trying to turn my brain off. And I, I could also skip, um, uh, uh, trying, to, uh, trying not to provide any additional expertise to check uh, to perplexity than uh, someone who's just trying to use it to learn uh, might do. So let's uh, draw my arrow to uh, represent a block. Draw a downward arrow to represent a force due to gravity. Yeah. If these uh, start to get repetitive, that's actually what I'm hoping. Um, at some point, the, draw, the step of drawing free body diagram, it should sound repetitive because you've seen the same situation so many times. Like, that's a good thing if that's happening. 
um, throw an arrow perpendicular to the slope and pointing away from the dot. Yeah, that would be this. Uh, draw an arrow parallel to the point. And, ah, okay, okay. So it's missed the force. It's uh, missed the fact that um, there is an. Oops. Sorry. It's. Uh, can I not do. Okay. It's a missed the fact that uh, there's an additional force here. It was in the image description, but it didn't get. So it missed uh, this force. The, the parallel applied force going this way. And it's separate from the friction force, separate from any other force. And this has an impact on how much normal force there will be, how much friction force there will be. So, um, yeah. yeah it's, um, I, I would say this is wrong because it missed the force that was explicitly stated. If I imagine the reason it's missing it is um, it's, uh, you know, it's the drawback of generative AI, which is that it doesn't actually, um, we call it generative AI, but what it's generating is it's uh, generating examples it has seen. And it, I'm sure it has seen tons of inclined plane exercises, but the kind of exercise it has seen where there's an applied, horizontal applied force, that it's going to be a lot fewer. So it's generating something that's closer to more common thing it has since. That's why it missed the apply the first. Um, that sounds good. Two blocks uh, are connected. Force FX up to the right. Yeah. All right. Uh, which view? Um, the view already in use. to draw the free body diagram. Okay, it's giving me instructions for two different blocks. That's good. Uh, so this is for M1. Downward to represent gravity, always there. W1. Uh, upward arrow to represent... Oh, it totally missed that. I don't think... Uh, um, it said the string is horizontal. Connected by a string and are on a horizontal surface. Guess it didn't explicitly say the string is horizontal, but it's giving positions in a horizontal fashion. It should have uh, understood that string is horizontal. Uh, draw a leftward. So I think this is gonna be a mess. Leftward force for friction. Uh, wait, uh, upward, leftward for friction. F friction. Um, yeah, and uh, looking at the mass too, I have downward force, W2, upward arrow, mm. um, turn up, yeah, let me see if, uh, um, uh, so, you know, someone who's following these instructions, if they are paying enough attention to realize that these are wrong, let me see if I can uh, correct it, uh, uh, but the uh, string is positioned uh, horizontally for this setup. Um, and see if it will correct. Yes. Okay, that represent W1. Right word there. Okay, okay. Um, it's, so it is correcting itself. It might still have missed the normal force. Um, <laughs> rightward arrow to representation force, T, and leftward arrow for friction. I think it still missed the normal force. Uh, throw a dot to represent the block. Um, and downward for gravity and leftward to represent tension, good. Um, and the uh, rightward arrow to represent rightward. Uh, um, it shouldn't have been rightward. It should have been, uh, you know, right and to the up. But I think so. It's getting the setup is getting complex enough that it's confusing uh, GPT. It's uh, um, just not able to keep track of things that you or I might be able to keep track of. Um, so this is definitely it's definitely wrong. Uh, I could do a follow-up question and ask, hey, did you forget about the normal force? 
but um, I think by this point, uh, I'll just recognize that I missed it. <laughs> um, so far, it's, I think it's missed two out of ten, so uh, a lot better than ChatGPT was last semester. I, I will tell you that um, with the ChatGPT, I rejoiced whenever it was wrong because as long as people are using it as a cheating tool, I would rather it be a really bad tool for cheating. Um, but you know, if it's uh, acceptable as a learning tool, then I do want a learning tool to work properly. Uh, let me just to make sure it has better chance at actually getting this right by consistently labeling my blocks. Two and one. Uh, all right. This can be challenging. Uh, what is the angle between F and horizontal surface uh, use data? Um, to do the free body diagram to the axis. Okay. Um, I would be so surprised if we got Newton's third law application correct. That M1. Downward arrow for the weight, W1. Leftward arrow uh, to represent. Uh, I, I think that is right. Friction force, uh, F static. Um, uh, but it missed the normal force. And I believe uh, it misunderstood the applied force. It says, Draw the uh, so I left order that I, what I drew there, and it also told me to draw right where there arrow for the apply the force, and uh, that uh, so this is incomplete. Um, uh, one um, well one uh, this is wrong. It should have been angled the same way this is, and two uh, it should have been uh, guiding me to draw the normal force. So not correct. Let's keep going and look at them too. And let's see if we got a Newton's third law portion right at least. I'm drawing dot to represent M2, downward arrow for gravity, and two, um, and not M2, sorry, I was thinking of something else, which I'll note in a bit. W2, draw an upward arrow from the dot to represent, oh, <laughs> that, that's crazy for a static friction force. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that is a mess. This is definitely wrong. And I, I'm not surprised. This is hard, uh, fig, hard situation to draw correctly. So I've already mentioned that this should have been really pointed in the direction that was indicated. You shouldn't be changing that. And on the M2, there are two reaction forces you have to worry about. This N1 comes from the this block. So there should be a downward uh, normal force of N1. And this friction force comes from M2. So there should be reaction force um, on the block. Um, and finally, what it has labeled as FS, it would have perfectly fit if it, that was the second normal force that's coming from the table. So, so yeah, it's got, what, uh, 8 out of 11? Um, I, I guess, um, it, and depending on your standards, that might be okay. Um, <laughs> for my standards, it's not uh, it's not the best, uh, especially for something like free body diagram drawing, which is the kind of activity that you should become so familiar that you can do it 100% co correct when you are in sleep deprived and not otherwise uh, thinking clearly. But, um, <laughs> but um, for a non-human, not even sentient tool, um, it has done well. Uh, because, you know, it's a basically regurgitating answers it's seen, um, which might be a good way for a large language model to learn, but that's not the best way for human beings to learn. <laughs> so with that, um, that covers the first agenda item.